Hello. So I received a funny comment recently about getting my lips done, and obviously I take that as a compliment. So thank you to whomever left that comment. I also made a few changes to my makeup routine, and I've been getting a lot more compliments about my makeup, both online and offline, since I've implemented these changes. So today I thought we could do more of a casual style of video and talk about what these changes are and share some valuable tips. Let's start off with the tips for the lips. If you've watched my videos before or if you've been following my channel at all, you know that I'm really not about blindly following trends. In fact, the messages of my videos are quite the opposite from that. But the reason why Fuller Lips works for me is because I have a long filtrum. And if you're more interested in learning about the technical details of the filtrum in relation to facial proportions, I have a video dedicated to this topic already, so I'll link it up here. So the reason why overlining my upper lip works for for me is because it makes my filtrum look shorter and more balanced against the rest of my face. But if you already have a short filtrum, then overlining the upper lip will make the filtrum even shorter and it can create a very unnatural look that highlights the length of the chin. So I just want to make the message clear that whether it's lip fillers or overlining your lips that you're interested in, it's not for everybody. So it's really best for you to learn more about your own facial proportions first before following any of these tips. So I've been overlining my lips for a while now and I've even shared some tips in my previous makeup tutorials or get ready with me videos. So this method has been evolving bit by bit over time for me and I've noticed that the key to making this look come across as natural is to focus on the outer corners of the mouth. So before I would only overline the top and the bottom of the lips and I only used a lip liner but now I actually use a contour stick to create shadows around the lips. And then I focus more on adding shadows to the outer corners of the lips as well. And that ends up making my lips look wider and it makes the fullness of the lips come across as a little more natural. It also makes the outer corners of the lips appear a little more upturned, kind of like you're smiling. And there's nothing wrong with downturned lips. I actually really love the look of downturned lips because it adds sassiness to the overall look, but they do have a tendency to drag the emphasis downwards. And upturned lips just make everything appear a little more lifted, and that can offset some proportional factors that already drag the attention down, like signs of aging. So the product that I use to contour my lips is this brown eyeshadow stick. It has a slight shimmer to it, but it still works for me. Obviously, a regular contour stick would also work for this stuff. The next tip I have for the lips, and you can use this whether you have a long or a short filtrum is to use multiple colors. And I've shared this tip many, many times before and I feel like I'm just repeating myself and I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but I keep sharing the same tip because I find that it makes the biggest difference for me. So what I usually do is I use a pretty neutral base color just to blend the lip contour into the lips. And here I'm using the NARS Soft Matte Lip Balm in Whiplash. And then I apply a deeper and slightly darker shade only in the inner parts of the lips. My usual go-tos are MAC Cockney or Almay Lip Vibes, and I'll provide the links to all of the products that I'm showing here in the description. Adding that second color really creates more depth and dimension to the lips, and that naturally makes my lips look plumper. And if I wanted to create a bolder look, I'll just use more of the darker color in a larger surface area. And that creates more of a red lip look, but the blurred outline of the darker color makes the red lips appear slightly more natural. And this is a great tip if your contrast level is not super high. So we've talked about contrast in our last video in relation to the value of colors, but contrast can not only be created by value, but also through saturation or clarity of colors. So if you have medium to low contrast and soft soft colors are your best colors, but you still want to wear that red lip once in a while, then blurring the outer edges of the lip color is really going to help with adding that softening effect. Now to amplify the volumizing effect, you can also add some shimmer to the center of the lips. Just think of it using the same logic as you would in highlighting and contouring the face. You use contour to make certain areas appear more receded. So for the lips, that's going to be the outer edges and the outer corners of the lips. And then you highlight certain areas to add more volume and fullness. So that's going to be the centers of the lips. And the last step to maximize the fullness or the volume is to use a glossy texture as a finishing touch. And I like using the gloss only in the centers of the lips. 
I just find applying the gloss all over can make the volume a little bit overwhelming, kind of like overdone fillers. And it makes the overall look a bit unnatural in my opinion, but that's just my personal preference. But if you feel like the gloss is too much, you can always just pat it down with a piece of toilet paper or use your fingers to just blend out the gloss a bit. Now there's three other major changes that I've made to my makeup routine recently and these tips are going to be really great if you have dry skin or if you want to extend the width of your eyes outward. So let's start with the skin first and the recent change I've made to my base makeup routine is mixing my moisturizing serum with my concealer. So before my base makeup routine was to use concealer only in the areas that I need like my under eyes and blemishes and I would just skip foundation and that's really great if you want to create that ultra natural no makeup makeup look but it is a little bit more difficult to layer product like blush or contour on top because the products don't really have much of a base to cling onto so it's not really great for longevity and even application the thing is i'm really not a fan of foundation because i find the color matching to be always difficult and it also makes me break out and what i found works for me is mixing my own moisturizing cream or serum with my concealer and then applying it all over the face so the concealer I'm currently using is already in a shade that matches my skin tone very well. And I don't know if it's because the moisturizers are products that I normally use regularly, but this combo just makes me break out less. So whatever it is, it's working. So to give you specific steps, I first let the brush soak up some of the moisturizing serum first, and then I dilute the concealer in. And I'm using a flat brush to apply a very thin, even layer all over my face. And then I use a powder puff sprayed with a little bit of makeup fixer to just press in the products and get rid of any edges or lines that are created by the brush. Now using this powder puff and fixer combo is, again, it's a tip I've shared multiple times and I'm starting to sound like a broken record but if you want your makeup to last without the look changing over time then you want to use the thinnest layer of products possible i have tried using a thicker base layer for filming and it looks great on camera and for the first little while when the makeup is fresh but as time passes it does start to look very unnatural because the makeup lifts and then it kind of starts to look like i'm wearing a mask and this is also a great tip for those of you with very dry skin and especially for for dry seasons like right now because mixing in the moisturizing serum not only dilutes the thickness of the concealer and it allows for a thinner and more even application but it also provides that extra hydration that your skin needs and you can use the same tip for blush as well i find that diluting the color first on my hand prevents any over application of color and it ends up creating a much more natural look the next area to talk about is the eyes and one of the changes I've made to my makeup routine is how I apply my mascara. So before I would just curl the lashes normally and apply the mascara to lift the lashes vertically and that adds vertical length to the eyes in an upward direction. And that's great at making the eyes look bigger and more open but it also raises the position of the eyes visually. But like I said, I have a long filtrum already, so there's really no reason for me to extend the distance between my eyes and my lips even further. So my goal should really be to extend my eyes more horizontally. And that's also because I have some width in my face and in my outer fifths, so I want to fill the gap in this area. So now I apply my mascara sideways or diagonally to extend the horizontal width of my eyes outwards. And the end result makes the eyes appear a little less open or round. They also make my eyes look more relaxed. And that I think suits the natural shape of my eyes more. My eyes are naturally more horizontally wide and I have some softness found in my irises as well. So the more relaxed look I think just works a little bit better with how my eyes are naturally. And then when it comes to the eyeliner, what I've started doing recently is filling in the waterline. So before I used to avoid waterline makeup altogether because it does make the eyes look smaller in general. And what I wanted to do is to add more vertical length to my eyes to make them appear rounder. But these days I've been feeling like I wanna accentuate the natural shape of my eyes more. And like I said, they have more prominence in the horizontal width naturally. And filling in my waterline and focusing especially in the inner corners 
really highlights the sharpness in the overall shape of the eyes and it accentuates the width of the eyes as well. So before I used to apply highlighter in the inner corners, but now I fill in my waterline in the inner corners. And one is not necessarily better than the other, they just create different looks. I do still avoid wearing a black eyeliner in my waterline because I find it to be too harsh. I think brown is just the more natural color that works better with the softness in my irises. And brown also smudges more naturally than black. So since I've implemented these changes, I've been getting noticeably more compliments about my makeup, both in the comment section and in real life. So these are some subtle changes, but they do make a noticeable difference. So if you're kind of bored with your current makeup routine and you want to change things up, definitely consider your own proportions first rather than blindly following what other people are doing. And you can always look at celebrity lookalikes for inspiration or watch more of my videos to gain more knowledge around facial proportions. Portions. I hope you like the tips and I'll see you in my next video. Until then, stay unique and stay gorgeous.